Thank you, Lord. Well, God bless you. Thank you for joining me once again. Just want to say how much I appreciate you and love you. And just want to uh, continue to work on your faith as I work on mine. And so just want to encourage you today, no matter what's happening, what's going on, you got a God who is faithful. And so just want to say thanks again. Um, don't be moved by the things that's happening in the world. You know, the Bible teaches us there's three people that you can look at. You can look at the Jews, you can look at the Gentiles, and you can look at the church. So if you see like the Jews on the right side, the, the Gentile nations on the left, but the church is right there in the middle. And right now, the church is the one that needs to rise up. And as we begin to rise up and just trust God and use our faith, we're going to see this coronavirus, I mean, destroyed. And God has a plan for us. And we're going to see that plan, you know, lived out in your lives and my life. And so I want to just say, hey, I'm glad you're with me. I want to just tell you that I really do appreciate you spending some time, giving up your more precious time to just get into this word with me. So I really want to just teach and keep building your faith so that way we can, um, you know, grow, grow, grow. Now, remember last week, I, you know, before I really get into this word, just remember last week when I've asked you, did you ever get into a fight that you lost? And more, more than likely, you probably did. And so what happened? You wasn't prepared or the person took you off guard. But nevertheless, it's time for us to stop letting the, the devil, you know, take us off guard or catch us off guard and defeat us. When the Bible says that you are more than conqueror, the Bible says no weapon formed against you can prosper. The Bible says every promise that's in Christ Jesus is yes already from the Father. So instead of us seeing defeat or losing, it's time for us to build our faith. The Bible says in 1 John 5, 4, this is the victory that will come the world, even our faith. So this is why faith is so important. And we're going to get ready to read our foundation text, and then we're going to build on that. But let me, uh, you know, you know, may, some of you may not have known that Janelle, her spiritual daughter, her dad gone, you know, you know, be with the Lord. So we just want to um, give her, our, send out our love. Y'all make sure that y'all keep her in prayer, her and her entire family. And let's make sure that, you know, we show us some love. Um, so make sure that you talk with her, call her, text her, email her, whatever you can do. And just let her know if we're thinking about her. And we're thinking about the family. She's such a wonderful person, very loving and caring. And I know her dad loved her. I know that her dad, you know, really appreciate the time to how she came out to the hospital and saw him, took care of them. So we're going to keep her in prayer because we do care about her. Excuse me. Do care about her and love her. So let's get into the word right now. But before that, let's just pray. Father, we just thank you right now. And we give you the glory and the honor. God, we just thank you that you're such a father who is like no other. We thank you, Father, for your compassion. We thank you, Father, for your grace. We thank you, Father, for your help. We thank you, Father, for all that you do. We give you praise and the glory. We thank you for your anointing today. We thank you, Father, for victory today. For to each and every person who's hearing this word, to you be the praise and all the glory and all the honor. So right now, we armor up with your word and we take our stand against the adversary because we know he's defeated and we got the victory. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Let me take a little drink here. Oh, it's green tea. It's green tea if you was wondering. So let's look at Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 1. It says here, it says, verse 1, I will stand my watch and set myself on the rampart and watch to see what he will say to me and what I will answer when I, when I am corrected. So we see that the prophet, he's wise. He knows the nation in trouble. He goes into prayer. He says he's going to take his stand and his watch. And every believer right now, if you're already in your homes, they won't let you go out, you know, to work. 
or whatever your circumstance may be, take your time, take some time out and watch and pray. Just take out some more time. If you say I've been praying, then pray some more. I mean, there's nothing wrong with always constantly in prayer. And then here he says in verse two, then the Lord answered me and said, write the vision, make it plain on the tablet that he may run who reads it. So God's going to give the church revelation. In Matthew 6, Matthew 16, Jesus said, I'm going to build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail. He's referring to the revelation that he gives us. Satan is not going to have that revelation. Satan is not going to know what to do with that revelation. And here we have Habakkuk saying, hey, write down the revelation. Write down what God speak to us. And then we see here in verse 3, it says, For the vision or the revelation of the Lord is yet for a point in time. But at the end it will speak, it will not lie. It said, Though it tarries, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. And I just believe God's best is about to be revealed. I know you see a lot of things happening, but I just believe God's best is about to be revealed in your life, in my life. And because let's look at verse 4. It says here, Behold the proud, his soul is not upright in him. But then it says, But the just shall live by his faith. The just shall live by his faith. So we've been in this here study about building our faith. Then we start talking about who's the just? That's you. How do we live? We're living, we're flourishing, we have recovery of breath, recovery of everything by our faith. Now, the Jewish Talmud says, Moses, he gave 613 commandments. Then it says, David, he reduced it down to 10. And then it said, Isaiah, in the Talmud, that Isaiah reduced it down to two. But Habakkuk the prophet, he reduced it down to one. If we begin to start living by faith, we're going to start seeing manifestations of God's promises. Now, if you're going to live by faith, I can see why the Jewish look at this, you know, Jewish Talmud rabbis look at this. Because why? You're living by faith. That means you got a relationship with God. You can't have a relationship with somebody that you don't believe in. And then secondly, okay, as you progress to Isaiah, he's talked about having, you know, love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your mind, soul, and strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself. So that's the next. But you can't love somebody that you don't believe in. So first is about, you know, having faith in God. Secondly, you know, it's a love that's God. And then third, we're supposed to love our neighbor, right? And then I want you to see that as we build this faith, as we build it and just continue to build it, we're going to start seeing manifestation. And that's what the church should be living by faith. Then we talked about if. And we said if is the is the is standing for incredible faith or increasing faith. Then I start talking to you yesterday about the definition of if. The if conditions of your faith. So we said the word if is used to say that a particular thing can or will happen only after something else or become, you know, something else become true. So I said, if water is heated to 212 degrees Fahrenheit, it will turn to steam. So if, if that condition is met, I can get water to turn to steam by heating it, heating it up at a certain temperature. Then I also said, if you don't feed your children, they will get grumpy. You know that's true. So now, most often when you use the word if, it can introduce the possibility or an impossible situation. So now, some situation or condition can be real, imagine, or uncertain. So don't never let your if, you know, I stands for 
you're going to imagine failure. Never imagine failure. Not with God. So let's get into Mark chapter 5, verse 24. Because I want to build on this here because we can see this woman, she had her condition if, but she met those conditions. So most often, believers put conditions on their faith. If they meet them and they're biblical, they're going to see manifestation. So like Thomas, we talked about briefly, he said he will only believe if he can see Jesus and thrust his, his finger in his side. Jesus said that wasn't faith. That was actually unbelief. So let's look at some things because, you know, you never place the condition of your faith on manifestation. Never place the condition of your faith on manifestation. Meaning, I believe when the pain leaves. I believe when the pain leaves. Never put your, your condition of your faith on. Once the pain leaves, then, I'm, then I feel better. So, so that's, you, you, you can't do that because that's unbelief. Now, the next thing I want you to realize, when you say, huh, when the symptoms are gone, that's when I'm healed. That's not biblical faith. You and I, when we're standing in faith, we believe, we receive, and we'll have manifestation. We believe, we receive, and we'll have manifestation. We believe, we receive, and we have manifestation. So let's look at Mark real quickly because I want to bring this point out to you. In Mark chapter 5, we're going to see this woman, how she using her faith, and she's using faith correctly, that she's trusting God. And when she trusts God, she's pulling on a principle that it actually manifests on her behalf. Let's look at it. it says Mark 5. Did you find it yet? Verse 24. Glory be to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Let me grab this. <laughs> Thank you, God. Mark 5, verse 24. Say, I know Satan, he's getting, he's getting, he's getting. You know, he's getting, you know, he's getting nervous because he knows once we get this, this faith principle down, we, he knows that he's not going to be able to stop us. Now, it says in Mark 5, verse, verse 25, it said, Now, a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years and has suffered many things from many physicians. She has spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. Then it says, verse 27, when she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. Watch this verse. Verse 28, it says, For she said, here's the word, if, if only I may touch his clothes, I should be made whole. Now look, she put a if, you know, concern that if she can touch Jesus, should be made whole. So she had this condition. If I can touch his garment or his clothes, I can be made whole. Now, that's where her faith condition was set. Now, she set that condition based upon what she heard. She heard others that was touching Jesus and they were being healed. So she had this expectation. If she can get close enough to Jesus and touch his garment, she's going to be made whole. So, she, what, so what did she have to do? She placed the condition. Now, of course, there's many ways of being healed, but for her faith to operate, she set a condition and said, I need to touch him. If I touch him, I will be made whole. And she was willing to take the risk to touch Jesus. Now, watch this here. And then it says in verse 29, watch this out. It says, immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of her affliction. What happened? She met the condition. She said, if I can touch Jesus, I'll be made whole. She acted on her faith. She actually pushed through the crowd, and she actually got close enough to Jesus to touch his clothes. Now watch. When, when, when the condition of your faith is met, then the power is released. The Bible said there was no delay. Immediately that power flowed out of Jesus. Jesus didn't have to pray for her. Jesus didn't have to, you know, do anything for her. All she needed was Jesus as to allow her to get close enough, and as soon as she as soon as she touched him, 
the power of God was released and she had the manifestation. Why this is so important? Because most often people have set conditions to their faith. If you set the right condition and you operate or you activate it, you'll see manifestation. But if you had placed a condition such as when the pain leaves, that's when I believe I'm healed. That is not biblical faith. Biblical faith, take God at his word. And, it, and, it, and then you're going to base the condition based upon what, what, what the spirit of God gives you, what this insight that God gives you. God knows what it takes to bring you to the level of faith. So he knows exactly how to guide and lead you, but never put a condition on your faith that is unbiblical. Now here, this woman says, if I can touch, why, why should that work? Because other people was touching Jesus with faith, and guess what? They were being healed. She heard about this here, so she said, if I can touch Jesus too, I will be made whole. If I can get close enough, I know I'm going to be free. And watch, as soon as the condition was met, she was set free. She was set free. She was set free. The power of God was released. And as soon as the power of God was released, she had her healing. It actually manifested. It actually, you know, she drew, in other words, she drew out of Jesus what she needed into her body. She made contact with Jesus by faith, and that condition was met, and now her, her physical condition was changed immediately. So this is why I'm going back over this. So I want to make sure that you understand that most often God is waiting on you. He's not, he's not holding back his power, but he's waiting on you. What have you said that has set a condition that your faith cannot manifest the, the promise of God because you have said something that that must be met. So, so you got to be very cautious. You know, some of us, we say, well, if this, if this happened, then I would believe God. You know, you got to be cautious. If it's not biblical, then it won't work. So let's, let's look at 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. I want to show you about this one church in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 3. How they are going through hard times. But nevertheless, the hard time they're going through, they still stay steadfast in their faith. In fact, the Apostle Paul says that they had exceedingly growing faith. It seems to me that when persecution came upon them, their faith was growing. It wasn't weakened. It was actually being used. And this is what we've been talking about. Because you're going through so many things right now, you should be building your faith. Don't cast it away. Build that faith up. And notice the Bible it says in 2 Thessalonians that they was going through a lot of hard time. But nevertheless, they stay, I mean, they stay abounding in love towards each other. And they kept holding on to their faith. Now, and their faith was exceedingly growing. In fact, where the Apostle Paul said, hey, I got to use you as a model church. I got to boast about your faith because the persecution that you're going through, the hard time you're going through, you're not stopping. You're still pursuing. In fact, the Apostle Paul, by the Spirit of God, says, look, God, you know, he is going to, his, his judgment in righteousness is, is going to be twofold. First of all, God, you know, because you're, you're suffering for the kingdom, God, your father is going to count you worthy. That's amazing because in God's judgment, he sees this twofold. He said, one, because you're going through persecution because of your faith, you're, you're counted worthy to enter into the kingdom or be a part of the kingdom. And then the second thing God says with his judgment, those who persecute you and causing you trouble, I'm going to bring affliction and judgment on them. So when you're standing in faith, I want you to realize that, hey, you're suffering, of course, for the kingdom, but you're being counted worthy. And that's something special and unique. If you want to be in the kingdom, then you're going to also suffer the persecution of being part of the kingdom. And God says that he'll count you worthy. And then secondly, he will bring swift judgment on the troublemakers. So you can read that in 2 Thessalonians. But some verses that I always like to bring up and talk about, which is so important. Verse 10 in, in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, it says, 
And when he comes in that day to be glorifying the saints, I want you to realize you're so close to this here. See, there was do false doctrine that came against this, this, this church, telling them that the rapture or the second coming in Christ had already occurred. The Apostle Paul had the address in the first letter and in the second letter. He's talking about when Jesus come in that day to be glorified in his saints. And now this is powerful. Let me read it again. It says here, when Jesus come in that day to be glorified in his saints and also to be admired among all those who believe, it says, because our testimony among you was believed. You cannot stop your believing. Now, in the context here, we know there's a falling away. In the last days, there's going to be a falling away from the faith. But that's not you. That's not me. Because why? We're building our faith. And here it says, when Jesus come in that day to be glorified and admire, one translation says he's coming to glorify you and glorify me. But then, it's, it, then it progresses and say, verse 11, Therefore we also pray always that our God would count you worthy. So we back to this thing that you be found worthy. You be found worthy of the call. Why would you be found worthy of the call? Because you suffer for the kingdom. You went through the persecution. Now look, suffering because you don't have any toilet paper, that's not suffering for the kingdom. It is talking about standing in your faith and your belief in God where you preaching this gospel and somebody is attacking you because of that faith. Not because, you know, you're fighting over toilet paper. No, this happened to do to say, hey, I'm walking by faith, I'm living by faith, and you know who I trust in and you know who I believe in. And here, this, their faith is on display. It's very clear they love Jesus. It's very clear these are believers. It's very clear that they're walking in this covenant that they have with God. So no matter what happens, they're going to keep on living this life that's pleasing God. So he says here that the Apostle Paul said, look, there's things I'm going to do right now. It's needed. I'm going to pray that God would count you worthy, that you do not fall out, you do not cave in, you keep walking, and you keep stay, man, stay, 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 stand fast, stay unmovable in your faith, keep on believing and trusting God, don't be, don't be shy, don't be as embarrassed of the gospel, but keep on, you know, keep on letting everybody know, yes, you are a believer, and yes, do you want to be one too? And then secondly, he said, I'm praying this in you that you're not you that you're gonna be found worthy of this calling. Secondly, he also then says, I'm gonna also pray that you know that God would be able to fulfill all his good pleasure of his goodness. It's time for the believer no longer about our pleasure, but it's about the kingdom pleasure. It's about what's pleasing God right now. It's about doing the right thing in God's sight. Let God get the pleasure out of your life right now. Let God be able to speak through you and talk to you and move you and shift you in the very things he's calling you to do. Then the third thing I want you to see so important here, and this is where, I mean, this is powerful. It says, also, he's saying that the work of faith with power. I've been teaching on this almost last year about this work of faith with power. There's a work that God is waiting to do through you. It requires faith. And when you and when you develop this faith, you're going to see his power. See, most believers will want to see the power of God, but they don't have no faith developed. And since, since they don't see, they don't have no faith developed, then they can't do the work that God has called them to do. So there is a work that the church needs to do in this end time, and it requires faith. It requires an ever-increasing faith. Remember I said that word, if. If, you know, incredible faith, increasing faith, it is a faith that cannot die, it's a faith that cannot be afraid, it's a faith that is bold to declare and believe that Jesus took the coronavirus to the cross, he defeated every virus, and by his stripes we're healed. It is a faith that says no matter what happened, God is greater. It is a faith that does not become quiet and passive is a faith that we're actually living out. 
I believe that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. I believe that you're more than a conqueror. I believe that you're not going to be afraid because God didn't give you a spirit of fear or intimidation. I believe that you're going to rise up and you're going to use this faith to be well-pleasing to God. And you're going to see the work of faith with power. You got power, church. You got the power residing in you. But now you just got to learn how to release the faith and see the works that God called you and I to do. And then this is so important because once we begin to look, make the decision, I'm okay with knowing that if I live godly in Christ Jesus, I'm going to suffer persecution. You got to get that settled. It's no more tippy-toeing. It's no more thinking, hey, you exempt from persecution. No. If you are a Christian and you're living God in Christ Jesus, get ready. You're going to suffer persecution. Now, once you settle this here, now what's going to move into your heart, then okay, it's, a, it's, a, it's the word. I'm going to have to suffer persecution. So therefore, since I'm going to have to suffer persecution for the gospel, for the kingdom, God's going to count me worthy. Not only does he count me worthy, he's going to deal with the adversary who's trying to put the affliction or the trouble. But the, th but the second thing I want you to realize that he's going to get the good pleasure out of your life and out of my life. So we should be living life. It may not be, you know, it may, it may, we should be living life that, hey, it's tough, but God is pleased. It's hard, but God is pleased because he's going to count me worthy because I'm suffering for the kingdom. Number two, he's going to find out, hey, I'm ready to do what he's called me to do because he's going to get the pleasure. Three, you're going to start experiencing the work of faith with power. You're going to begin to start seeing the work of faith with power. You're going to begin to start seeing power back into the church because we're rising up in our faith. Now, I'm going to say, I'm going to, I'm going to get you into something that God has been showing me about the spirit of God, what he's been waiting on the church to do. And you're going to begin to experience such a power and anointing that no disease is going to be able to get, in, get a hold of you. I'm going to prove that out in the, in the scripture because that was happening in John G. Lake. No disease can touch his body. It died immediately. immediately. Now, the next thing I, it says here in these verses, that not only that, the Bible says that God is ready to glorify you and and and. And for him, he's going to be glorified, and then you're going to be glorified. That's amazing what God is about to do in your life. You get ready. The glory is about to be revealed in such a degree, everybody going to know who the believers are. Everybody going to see you walking in power. Everybody going to know who the, ch the church really is. And then it says, too, that not only God can be glorified in us, but we're being glorified in him. And then I'm going to... Let me close with this last part. And then it says that according to the grace of our God. Now that's powerful because why? Everything ties back to God's grace. This grace is a special endowment of power. So when you're weak, you're really strong. The Apostle Paul says that this way. When I'm weak, that's when I'm boasting because I'm about to see God's endowment, his special endowment power to help me get through persecution, to help me get through, you know, tough time. This, this special power of grace is now being revealed through you. Now, look, the world going to know there's anointing on you. There's a power on you because the grace of God is going to be seen in you and through you. That everybody else falling apart, yet somehow you always come out on top. Something comes upon you. That's called the grace of God. It's, it's the power man to overcome where you don't give up and neither will I give up. Now you make sure you keep on tuning in because I want to keep on helping you to develop your faith. And I want you to realize, okay, that these conditions that we have placed on our faith, they got to be met. So, and then once you see what they are and they're biblical, then you're going to find out, oh, I can see how the work of faith with power operates. So remember the centurion said, Jesus, you don't have to come to my house. Just speak the word. That's all he needed. And when he spoke the word, Jesus said, okay, done. He sent the word and that child was healed. So I'm, I'm excited. Now, look, I, there were some things going on in my mind when I first started. And I want you to realize, look, 
What the Spirit of God is, is saying to the church is so vitally important. We got to start watching and praying. We got to be discerning and hear what he has to say. And once we begin to lock into what the Spirit of God is teaching us and showing us and leading us in, you're going to see manifold grace. You're going to see wisdom. I mean, you're going you're gonna to see God move in such a way where he's going to get the glory out of your life and out of my life. So don't walk in fear. Just keep on hearing the word. Keep on letting your faith be built. And as your faith continue to develop, you're going to see God do some great and mighty things through your life. Love you. See you soon. Again, keep Janelle family in prayer. Show us some love. God bless you.